into multiple. I would have liked to have tasted that. Right? What would that taste like? See, in my mind, I'm crazy, all right? I'm just, it's just the way my brain works. I'm like, did God, like, make that exact bread? So whoever made that bread, did he make it exactly the same way? Or did he tweak it a little bit? I'm like, okay, this bread was made by human hands. Let me get a taste of bread made by Almighty God. Okay. I have no idea, right? I have no idea. You know, was the was the fish, this is how I think, okay, was the fish a DNA replica of the exact fish that was in there? Or did he just make fish? You know what I'm saying? Some this long, some that long. I, mean, I have no idea. I have no idea. But that's the way I think out loud. <laughs> but there was a spiritual significance to the miracle, right? Because Jesus' provision of bread opened the door for a discussion of the bread of life. He's now going to reveal himself as the bread of life. Those who, and people take him wrong because people started thinking that the way, or Christianity, they, they were cannibals. Because Jesus goes off and starts saying, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have everlasting life. Now he's not literally saying that. I mean, he says that, those literal words, but that's literally not what he means, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a spiritual thing. Come to me. This is, the big picture is, come to me, receive the bread. My teaching, remember, remember in John chapter 4, it says, my bread is to do the work of my father. So he's equating obedience and doing good works for God Hallelujah. as bread. Jesus says, here is the work I want you to do. Believe on the name of the Son of God. That's our work. That is the bread, so to speak, that we partake in. So we, we find a spiritual significance in this miracle. Jesus, remember when he was dealing with the woman at the well, the Samaritan well? He starts with the natural. Whoever drinks this water will thirst again and swings to the spiritual. If you ask of me, I will give you uh, life bubbling up, into, or water bubbling up into eternal life. He starts with a natural, swings to the spiritual. He starts with a picnic, and he's going to end with a banquet at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? So we see God's power in everyday needs. We do. There's no need too big or too small for God. I've actually met people that had some anxiety about something. And I say, you know, what, what's going on? He goes, well, it's, it's no big deal. Have you prayed about it? It's no big deal. In other words, they're saying, it's just a small matter. But I'll tell you this. Sometimes a small matter causes us to lose sleep. Sometimes a small matter causes our heart rate to be elevated. Causes us to, to have anxiety and wonder, well, what, what's going on? And sometimes it's the little things that get to us. And maybe it's a preponderance of the multitude of little things that end up to be something that's just causing us some angst in our life. Then there's the big things. Right? The big things. Um, I'm not even going to venture to say what those are. Okay. But the big things. I'll tell you what, some things that just hit you right between your eyes. Right? The death of a loved one. The boss calls you into the office, hands you the pink slip. On the way to so and so, someone crosses the lane and sideswipes your car. You live to tell about it, but now you don't have a car. You know, some big things. The doctor calls and says, I have these test results. You need to schedule an appointment with me right away. Right? So, big things. We take even the big things to God. He handles the small. He handles the big. He is a God where nothing is too small and nothing is too big for Almighty God. He invites us to cast all our cares on Him because He cares for us. I like that about tells us, he wants us, invites us. He's saying, listen, cast your cares on me. 
Put my yoke upon 